Okay, so today we're going to dehydrate so some do, mushrooms. Do. And we are going to make, we are gonna make um, mushroom powder. I'm gonna explain to you in a minute why we're going to do this and why it's a good thing to keep in your pantry. But first I wanna show you the dehydrators. <laughs> Hi, Goobas. <laughs> to show you that you don't need fancy equipment to get this done, okay? These are both pretty inexpensive dehydrators. Pretty. I know that there are some really neat dehydrators out there. There's a brand, it's called the Excalibur, and it's one you'll see on a lot of homesteading channels. It's really cool. Mommy. It has tons of settings and so trays or like stainless steel or something like that, I think. The but it's very that. expensive, okay? Maybe one day. But if you're like us and every penny counts, I'm going to show you some really affordable dehydrators that get the job done. The first one I've had for 10 years now. I bought it before we even owned the farm and we were just living in town and I wanted to be able to dehydrate like jerky from some deer we had. And so I bought this off the shelf at Walmart. At that time, I think it was $50. I'm not sure what it costs now, but I will link it below. And this is just probably the cheapest one I could find. <laughs> cheapest one, I don't even know what they're doing. Okay, the cheapest one I could find and it's got no bells and whistles. You plug it in and it turns on. There's not even a button on here. You cannot control humidity or temperature or anything. It just turns on, okay? But it works great and I use it almost every week and it's still running after 10 years. Our favorite thing to dehydrate is banana chips. The girls help me with that. We buy bananas in bulk on the weekends when our store has them marked down for their like kind of ugly overripe bananas which make great banana chips and we put them in here and we just let them go overnight and they're ready. So we're gonna use this one today. And the second one I have is a little bit more expensive. I got it second hand so I have to look up, I think the shelf price is about 120, but I have to look that up. This, um, this one, here you go, does have some buttons and you can control the temperature and the time with this one which is nice. Um, so if you want to set it and forget it and it'll turn itself off so you don't have to worry about overdoing it, um, you can do that with this one. Um, let's see what's the brand on this. This is a 1856 red, redhead and the other one is just a Presto Dehydro. I really like Presto products, by the way. Um, they're always affordable and they just seem to get the job done. My favorite canner is a Presto too. And most Presto products, I don't know if all of them, but a lot of them are made in the United States too, which is great. And it's also really easy to find a replacement product. Like this one, it comes with four trays, but you can add four more and it'll still work. And the trays are inexpensive. You can order them right off Amazon, so you could actually stack eight trays. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This has eight trays right now. Um, you can buy additional trays. I don't know if this one would do well with additional trays. Eight seems like max capacity, just in my experience using it. And maybe because I bought it secondhand, it's a little bit older. I don't know how old this is, um, but it doesn't seem to have the power that I would be able to like stack double trays on here and it would get it done. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and get the mushrooms ready. So typically it's cheaper to buy whole mushrooms, but the store had the sliced mushrooms on clearance, like a used, used today kind of thing. So I just picked up two packs. Um, I am at no idea how much this will make, so we'll be learning together. But I do can a lot of mushrooms. I'll link that video below. Um, I love canning mushrooms. Like, it was one of those things I did because mushrooms were on sale, and I was like, oh, I think I'll can them. And I was like, I don't know what I'll use them for. And now I use them all the time. So canning mushrooms is a great thing to do. When you see them on sale, you should do that. Um, but I want to try dehydrating them today. So I only bought two packs because we're going to see how this goes. But through canning mushrooms, I've learned that the best way to actually clean mushrooms is to soak them, which seems a little counterintuitive because we're wanting to dehydrate them. But if you just rinse them off, like in a colander, it doesn't really get the dirt off of them very well. It just kind of sticks to that smushy mushroom exterior. So the best we can do is to dump them in some cold water for five minutes and then drain it and then rinse and drain that and that gets them really clean. Why those soak for a couple minutes? What are we gonna do? Why are we dehydrating mushrooms? So the main reason is for this. <laughs> so I make a cream of mushroom cream of chicken base. So this could be used to replace any cream of dot, dot, dot soups. I keep it on my counter. It's a dry one. I'm gonna refill it today. If you're curious about how I make it, I'll link that video below. I use it all of the time and I love it. 
and it's one of those replacements that actually I feel like tastes just like the original, which is great because those cream of like Campbell's cream of mushroom soups, the little cans, they get expensive really fast. And also there's a lot of preservatives in them. So making it myself, I have a lot of control Mommy, over the I ingredients. Need to brush your hair. Okay, you're gonna brush my hair for me? Yeah. So I make my own. But um, when I want to make cream of mushroom, and so I add a couple diced mushrooms into it as I mix it up to put in my whatever I'm cooking. Um, it, you only need a couple mushrooms and so then you end up opening a whole jar or you buy a whole box just to have it and then it's like you have like this weird half jar of your canned mushrooms and then you have to find something to do with it and one of the viewers commented I think it was Irene and said oh I just make my own mushroom powder and I add it in when I need mushrooms and I was like what a great idea because we can vacuum seal it and also it's already a dry thing anyway and um, it should last a long time. You're not gonna be in a hurry. You got a couple, instead of having to use it up in a couple days, like you can extend that shelf life. So we're gonna make mushroom powder so that when I need a cream of mushroom replacement, I don't have to open a can of mushrooms and then, JJ, ask once and then wait, okay? I will, but I need you to ask once and then you wait for me to finish, okay? So when I need the cream, when I need the cream of mushroom, I don't have to open a whole jar and waste or feel rushed to use what's left over. I have you know, the mushroom powder on the shelf. That's the idea. Now let me help JJ fix it. Okay, Micah here's gonna help me put these on the tray so I can help the little kids here with some stuff. Pretty basic, you just wanna make sure they're not on top of each other overlapping. She's gonna rock out to some music and get it done. Okay, I'll help you. they're gonna sit there until they're dry I'm gonna fast forward now to when that is and I can tell you exactly what the time was because I can't set a temperature on this when you google dehydrator recipes a lot of times they give you a time and a temperature but I can't set a temperature on this so for me there's a little bit anytime I try something new in here I kind of have to mentally learn what that time is going to be so like I know the banana chips they're about 14 hours, so I start them at dinner time and they're done the next morning when we get up. So we'll see how long this is until they're dry. Okay, it's been 12 hours. So Google told me it should take 10 hours. I just didn't feel like they were done at 10 hours. Like they're really close, but not quite. So this is 12 hours and I'm feeling really confident that these are done, so I'm gonna unplug them. And just, I'm just let them sit on the dehydrator tonight with it off, not like they're dehydrated, nothing's gonna happen. And in the morning, We'll, I'll show you what they look like and we'll get them prepared to make a uh, powder out of them. Okay, here we are. I put them in this Tupperware today until I have time to take care of them. Yeah, they're very dry. They look really good. We're gonna go ahead and send these through a food processor to get them ground up into um, some powder. Okay, I said food processor, but there's so few of them, I'm actually gonna use this blender. I think this will work just fine. Mommy. Fill it up. And there. So I can do the other okay, one? here we go. Can I do the other one? Stop. Let's take a peek. Alright, that looks pretty good. Let's get it into a jar. This is mushroom powder. What could you use it for? Alright, I think we can fit more in there. Let's do some more. All right, there it is. Those two containers made almost a whole half pint of um, of a jar. So it condenses a lot and also um, 
So it obviously condenses a lot, but when I use this to make like the cream of mushroom soup, I'm only gonna use a teaspoon at a time. So the only thing I'm not sure on is whether or not I should vacuum seal this. That doesn't make sense to me though, right? Cause I'm gonna use it pretty soon, but it might be a long time between times using it. And I don't want it to clump up really good. So maybe should I put an oxygen absorber in here? Tell me what you think. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys soon.